Greetings, and welcome to episode 48. In today's episode, we're going to be discussing symbols. Not symbolism, but symbols. Religious, spiritual, magical, whatever you want to call it. We're not going to be discussing specific symbols, but I'm going to be tracing where they come from and how they're used today as opposed to how they were used then. So, if you're ready, let's get started. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy. So, symbols. Uh, they can mean almost anything. It is up to the person using the symbol. But first I'd like to get into where they come from. Most symbols, including the Christian cross, predate Christianity. So it is not in fact the Christian cross. Symbols, the symbols we use today, be it for spiritual reasons or uh, magical reasons or religious reasons, these symbols have been around for millennia. Like I said, they predate Christianity. The stars and the different the, the different symbols. Now, you have to understand where they come from. These different symbols, as it concerns... I'm not going to be speaking so much of the, uh, the 73 symbols for the, for the chakras found uh, in the Keys of Solomon. I'm going to be speaking about uh, the different the different stars and 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 patterns like that and where they originate because the cross is is something that's been used for like I said millennia but the stars is something that is also been used for equally as long actually even longer because the stars what those represent is uh, sacred geometry and where that comes from and why it's sacred is because the universe is based on sound. In other words, everything you see is just a vibration slowed enough so that it appears to manifest as solid. So that's, that's what makes up the world around you. Well, these sounds have frequencies, and these frequencies... manifest in patterns. These patterns create geometry, thus sacred geometry, the geometry that the very building blocks that the universe is created on. Each different symbol, each different star symbol, and there's thousands of different star patterns, or different patterns that you'll see within a circle. Each pattern corresponds to a different frequency. Each frequency corresponds to a distinct thing, whether it be etheric or solid or, or what we would consider real. These symbols are neither good nor bad. What you do with them is good or bad. Your intention, the intention you put into the symbol is good or bad. Because <clears throat> saying, well, those are bad, those are evil, those are of the devil, that's like saying, well, God, your God, if you're religious, your God made the universe. These are the building blocks of the universe. If these building blocks are evil, then your God is evil. It's that symbol. <laughs> Having an understanding of these different vibrational patterns is understanding magic. Most people get it twisted. They try to combine nature 
magic with creation magic. And we've already discussed it. There's no such thing as magic. It's science. So you have the science of the planet. These are things that shamans would use. That's where you get your ayahuasca and your DMT and your and your your profound inner journey. But most people use these these things to manifest things in their physical reality. And most people use the wrong symbols, but that's not the point. We're not going to get into that. What we're going to get into, I'm trying to dispel the myth that these symbols equal the devil or Satanism or bad things in general it is just not the case. Like I said, a symbol is only as good or as bad as the intention you put into them. It's black magic. Well, let's get into black magic, that term black magic. It wasn't called black magic because it was inherently evil. It was called black magic because of the people that taught it to them. Just like they were called the Dark Ages, not because there was no enlightenment. They, you want to know the real reason why they were called the Dark Ages? Because the Moors ruled during those times, and the Moors were dark people. <laughs> Teaching black magic. <laughs> the Moors of those days? Ah... Uh, I'm not sure if they were the pre-Muslim Moors, which would be the, the, the Hebrew Moors, or if they were the Muslim Moors. See, there's, there's discrepancy in there, because you get, on the one hand, distinct evidence that it was the Jewish Moors, uh, such as the converting the Khazarians to Judaism, where you get uh, the Khazar Jews, which is what most people see as the Israelites today. And you, we all know about the Crusades and how they had to be pushed out of Spain and France and all that. Well, they had the entire region. They had almost all of Europe back then. They came at first to teach. It was the Moors that pulled Europe up out of its squalor and taught them uh, infrastructure and uh, proper building technique, engineering, uh, things of this nature. I'm getting way off course, but you need to see where uh, Western society learned black magic and symbols in the first place. It came from, that's where it came from. That's where we have it, why, why you have it here now. The reason these things were deemed evil was because anything you were against and couldn't control, all you had to do was associate it with negativity. You, uh, you associate it with the enemy. You associate, ooh, excuse me, you associate it with an enemy army, enemy nation, or in this case, an enemy god. That's of the devil. Well, anyone who has studied history knows that if I have an army and you have an army and I conquer your army, your gods are now the devil. I will say that you guys are doing devil worship. Vilify you, vilify your gods, vilify your angels, your saints, all demons. Your main god is the is the devil, and your all your saints are demons, and that is historical fact. That the losers worship the devil. Now it took very little. It could have been chance, luck, or maybe just great strategy. Whatever. That's how I won. Had the tables been turned, and had you won, or had the other te the other army defeated me, it would be. My gods that were the devil. My saints that were the demons. 
and most people don't know this, but each religion has its quote unquote magic. The Muslims have the Sufis. The uh, Hebrews have the rabbis. The uh, Christians had the Essenes and Gnostics. See, don't let them get it twisted. Don't let them twist it for you. Each religion had its magic. S over time, mainstream religion has distanced itself from its twin because its twin empowers you as opposed to empowering the religion itself and that's where you're gonna find the symbols now each religion has its uh, the mainstream religion has its they have their own distinct symbols Christianity has the cross mm. Judaism has the Star of David, uh, Islam has the Crescent and the Star. All of these symbols are significant, but unless you study the more esoteric side of those religions, you're never going to know what those symbols really meant. And I'm not going to get into what they mean. Like I said, I'm not going to get into specifics. I'm just trying to draw on you to go do the digging yourself. Because I could speak for hours and hours and days and days. I can present you with material and this and that. But if you don't go do the work yourself, you still don't know. Go look. There's libraries everywhere. There's inv information right here on the internet. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's what I'm trying to do is is to get you thinking and to get you to get started looking. Even if you think you already know, or even if you really do already know, you might not know as much as you think you know. So look into it. Go back and look. Like I said, each religion had, and these are the only religions that separated the esoteric side from the mainstream part of the religion. Because the esoteric side, if you learn the esoteric side of these religions, you would see that the main body of the religion had been manipulated by man. Is you, can't, you can't get around that if you understand the esoteric nature of it. Then you start to see, well, these parables and stuff that explain the esoteric part They've been twisted and have, you can distinctly see the hand of man in there. And that's why it was separated. That's why you have Buddhism, Taoism, all these other isms that never separated the esoteric aspects from, from the main body of the teachings because they didn't have to. They didn't inject anything into it. Today, so they didn't have to. They didn't inject the hand of man in there. Because they understand that these are just teachings. And that Buddha wasn't the son of God. And Krishna wasn't the son of God. That these were just enlightened teachers. They understand this. It is the, the mainstream religions that demand that God put their prophets here. <laughs> But if it's my understanding that God put us all here, so who's to say? I don't know. But back to symbolism. Symbols can also mean, I mean, people wear symbols all the time. And some people just wear symbols so you know already, but when you walk up to them, you know what they're about. You'll see the Satanist with the upside down star, the upside down cross. You'll see the Christian with the right side up cross. You'll see, oh, I can't say I've seen a necklace on a Muslim, but you'll see the, the, the beanie on, uh, on a Muslim. Still a symbol, 
It may not be like a, a, a star or a cross, but it's still a symbol. And it's okay. But just know that those symbols only have the power that you put into them. Some people only wear the symbols or show the symbols to show where they're coming from where they're speaking from, that they're coming from <laughs> that they're coming from a particular point of view, be it Christianity, Satanism, Judaism, uh, Islam, whichever. But there are those that wear symbols for a particular reason. Like uh, I wear this pentagram, it's a right side up star. To me, it's just a necklace. I don't use it for summoning or this or that. This is just a sign to show others where I'm coming from. This to me is no different than a sign that says bookstore. <laughs> I don't know. Sweden, Germany, whatever. <laughs> oh. Now, I have been known to lock an intention or two on it, but I don't use it for, for ritual purposes of any sort. And when I say ritual, people say, oh, ritual, you're, you're going to sit in the dark and light a candle and let your blood into a bowl. and blood. You know what? You know what a ritual is? A ritual is walking down the aisle and getting a wafer from a priest and then going over and drinking a sip of wine. That's a ritual. Performed every Sunday in every church across America. It's a ritual. <laughs> Believe it or not, <laughs> it's a ritual. <sighs> Where you symbolically eat the flesh and drink the blood of your Savior. That's a bit morbid when you think about it. <laughs> but I get it every religion has their little thing but also the, the wafer itself is a symbol uh, the wine is a symbol even more so than the cross I'm not even going to get into the craven images thing but every religion has symbols There is no one symbol that's better than another. There is no one religion that's better than another. They all teach the same thing. They all teach it differently. If you take the time to read it and you actually get into the esoteric aspects of that religion, you can see where the truth ends and the hand of man begins. Where men just wrote in something to control the masses. I get that. You get that. We all get that. You don't have to take, like I said, you don't have to take my word for it. Pick up a book. Go to the library. Research it on the internet. Whichever you like, it's there. I was kind of skeptical about doing this this particular one because I already got called out for being a Satanist just because I was wearing a particular shirt that didn't have any kind of Satanic symbols on it. It had crosses on it. <laughs> and the guy, you're a Satanist. Oh, God, yeah. Anyway... Not a Satanist. Not going to pretend I am a Satanist. That's not saying I've never been a Satanist. I'm just saying I'm not one now. <laughs> if you get far enough along, you'll start to notice that you cannot, if, you, if you're not a Christian, you cannot be a Satanist. Because Satan is a Christian deity. <laughs> And when the day I decided I wasn't a Christian, I also decided I couldn't be a Satanist because Satan is a Christian deity. <laughs> so.
So. <laughs> and people would say, well, you still have symbols. No, I, but those symbols predate Christianity and didn't even mean anything to do with evil. The sabbatical goat in the star was not an evil symbol and is not even a Christian symbol. It's a Hebrew symbol. And any symbol can be twisted for any means. You want to draw down unicorns and rainbows and love and light? Do it. And you can do it with any symbol. You can conjure up the devil with any symbol. Any symbol. It is the matter of your intention on that symbol. I said I wasn't going to get into parlor tricks and magic and all that, but if you're following my videos and you're actually kind of practicing some of the things I'm teaching, you'll start to notice that certain parlor tricks come with the techniques. I mean, but I would caution you to look into the the principles behind the technique because there's a reason why you studied for years and years and years to become a wizard because just learning the thing you still you want to learn the principles behind it because it is the principles behind it that empower it in the principles the end result is tree yes but the principles teach you how to manifest that tree So, what I'm doing now, as I'm, I'm helping you to discern, is that the right word? I'm not sure that's the right word. I'm helping you to choose and develop your uh, equipment, so to speak, properly. So, it's uh, psychosomatic. If you want to manifest a certain thing, it would be easier for most people just to pick a symbol associated with, say, if you want to draw down positive energy. You want to pick a symbol associated with a positive religion, thing, whatever. Deity, spirit, uh, saint, whatever. Teacher. Uh, but... It isn't necessary. You can draw anything through anything, and there's going to be people. Ah, oh, 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 that's bullshit. And I'm telling you, the sabbatical goat in the star predates Christianity. It is a Hebrew symbol, and it it even predates Judaism. We're talking back when. Kemet was ruled by what is now known as the Hebrews before they were pushed out by the Arabs. Before Judaism converted to Islam. And that's a whole nother lengthy discussion there. <laughs> Predates Judaism when as to when the Hebrews ruled Kemet. And trying to understand and learning who the real Kemites were and who the real Hebrews are, <laughs> that'll twist your knickers. <laughs> I'm not even going to get into that. I'm going to let you research that on your own. Because if you don't believe me about the symbols, you're never going to believe me about who the real Hebrews are. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> to get back at it, <clears throat> yeah, we just, we take for granted these symbols. 
and so they're more easily used against us for negative ends the more you know about these symbols the less likely they are to be able to be used against you negatively that's not to say that you can't use them negatively like I said I'm not for or against any religion or any disposition if you're a Satanist so be it if you're a Christian so be it if you walk in the light if you're a light worker so be it if you're a shadow worker so be it I don't care I'm here to teach it wouldn't sit well if I chose one student over another and who knows if Christianity had been taught properly and had not been muddled through with the BS that we all know was put in by man who know who's to say we wouldn't all be Christians today if it were taught properly and the esoteric aspects hadn't been removed who's to say I can pretty much guarantee I'd be a Christian had it been taught properly had the esoteric aspects not been completely abandoned yeah I, I can say with all honesty I'd be a Christian <laughs> but because every religion says the same thing and the further back you go you start to learn that religion was seen if you go back to Kemet otherwise known as Egypt Egypt the translation for the word Egypt means house of bondage before it was called that by the Greeks it was called Kemet the black land so when I'm saying these things predate Kemet the further back you go you start to see that religion was seen as an abomination religion was seen as an abomination <laughs> not a particular religion all religion <laughs> because religion was seen as the quickest way to corrupt good knowledge to have worship of a deity of a particular deity in a particular way was the quickest way to corrupt good knowledge and I say we get back to that <coughs> because let's face it the knowledge has been corrupted and all esoteric aspects of everything unless you go the completely Eastern route and do Buddhism Hinduism uh, Taoism Confucianism all those isms then you're gonna be stuck with a dried mundane allegorical journey <laughs> that most people don't understand because they don't have the the esoteric the esoteric insight to understand what's being said in the more mundane aspects <laughs> the mundane aspects are there to draw attention to and shed light on the esoteric parts that have been removed that's why nobody gets it well I don't understand well there's more to it keep digging that's all I can say do your research keep looking there's more to it and it's being kept from you on purpose but I'm not gonna present it to you because I don't want you to think well he wants our money he wants us to follow him <laughs> no do your own research and then if you want to send me money go ahead I'll send you a self self-addressed envelope <laughs> I'm not against money at all <laughs> I'm just not asking you for any yet yeah. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I don't want your money. I want your enlightenment. I want you to evolve as a human. Or whatever it is you are. If you've fallen behind, I need you to 
evolve. I need you to get this information so it can help you evolve. That's what it is. There's, I say I was talking about magic. There's no such thing as magic. It's science. These are all techniques to guide you through the evolutionary process. That's what they are. Learning to manipulate matter and draw down certain things and blah blah blah. That's neither here nor there. That's children mucking about. That's what that is. And what happens when children muck about? They usually burn their hands on the stove. And that's what you're seeing now. <laughs> so don't mess about in the kitchen. Go in the kitchen, learn what the different pots and pans and utensils are for. And if you have need to make a meal, make a meal. But don't just muck about playing. Because then you end up burning yourself or you burn your kitchen down. It's evolution. And anyone that says, well we, well, well, we can use it for whatever we want. Yes, you can. But that is probably the most childish view of it that you can have. I'm not ready to grow up yet. That's what I hear when I say, well, I can do with it whatever I want. That's what I hear. I'm not ready to grow up yet. Well, don't grow up. Go have fun. You don't have to take my word for it. Go. <laughs> I am encouraging you to go and have fun with it. Burn your hand. Burn your house down. And then you'll see, oh, maybe I should just move on and grow up. Yeah, maybe you should. <laughs> We've done enough damage. Okay? It's been over 2,000 years. We've done enough damage. It's time to grow up and move on. And yes, maybe you didn't have your chance to live in the sun and show your stuff. We've passed that point, and now we are to a point where we don't really have the time to enjoy what we've learned. We we got to learn all these recipes, but we really don't have time to cook anything, which is sad, kind of. So I'm not saying don't make yourself a few snacks here and there. By all means, eat up. But we really don't have time to make a feast right now. Now, when we all know the same recipes then we can get together and make a feast that can feed everyone instead of just the few. <coughs> and those that understand what I just said, you're really headed in the right direction. Anyway, we're getting on past the 30 minute mark and I'm gonna have to say I really like this episode. I really did. <laughs> If you have enjoyed this episode, this video, please click the like button. You can favorite it if you want. Also, please, please leave a comment down below. I really want to hear your take on this. It's supposed to be a discussion. Now, if you want to come and you want to spew hate down in the, ah, my God, this and that, I don't want to hear that. If you would like to come with your views of your religion and your God, by all means, post in the, in the comments. I would hate for you to be deleted without getting your point across because you're just coming across as hateful and ignorant. Okay? Okay. <laughs> anyway, if you would like to keep coming back here because you want more information or you just like the sound of my voice, then please hit the subscribe button. But until next time, you hang in there. <laughs>